Hi, Dan. How are you? Hey, Rachel. It's great to see you. You too. Good. Mm -hmm. our, our year is off to a pretty hectic start, isn't it? It is. It, it really is. I know during the program last week, there was so much going on and so many updates have happened since then. So I appreciate you taking the time to answer some more questions today. Well, definitely. I really enjoy it. And to me, like the title implies, it's a great way to keep the conversation going in between the webinars. Definitely. So our first question for today is, should we be supporting the Iranian de demonstrators more aggressively? Um, th there's no question uh, that the morality of the situation demands a more robust U.S. presence than has been the case in the past. And what I will say, uh, to give credit where it's due, is the Biden administration has done more under these circumstances than either the Obama administration in 2009 or the Trump administration in 2019 when uprisings occurred in that country. They provided tremendous technological support in, out, in order to allow digital media to, media to continue to function even while the Iranian government has attempted to shut it down. And President Biden and his representatives while not talking about it on a regular basis, have issued much more forceful statements on this than we've seen from either of his two most recent predecessors. I think especially, though, given Iran's heightened involvement in the Russia-Ukraine war, to me that opens up even more significant opportunities for the U.S. and its allies to be even stronger in its language and to look for other ways to engage substantially. So this administration is doing more than its predecessors. But there's room for, I think, even greater action beyond that. So our next question is about some U.S. policy. And the audience member says, since June of 2022, the U.S. inflation rate has dropped from over 9% to approximately 7%. At the same time, the unemployment rate is 3.7%. The U.S. inflation rate is much lower than most countries and is driven to a great degree by supply chain problems that are being resolved. Plus, job growth is strong. So their question is, given these facts, is it possible to claim great progress is being made in regards to our economic issues? Well, and in fact, the, the president and his allies have been claiming great progress on a regular basis. And one of the most interesting events to take place in the first week of the year, even while the speakership fight was going on on Capitol Hill, is President Biden and Republican Senate leader Mitch McConnell and the Democratic governor of Kentucky and the Republican governor of Ohio all appeared together at a bipartisan infrastructure event on the Kentucky-Ohio border to highlight legislation that had been passed with support from both parties last year. So there's no shortage of political leaders in both parties willing to make the point that the questioner just raised. That said, the average American consumer doesn't compare the inflation rate to other countries. They compare the inflation rate to what they're used to. And while inflation has come down in recent months, there's no question that for several months last year, it skyrocketed to the highest levels that we'd seen in this country in almost 40 years. Now, voter perception about the economy is a tricky thing. The unemployment rate has historically been the data point that most voters use when deciding whether they think the economy is doing well or doing poorly. But Rachel, think about it. Even in periods of very high unemployment, it's only a very small percentage of the American people who are out of work. But when inflation's high, Everybody pays it. And so what we saw last year when inflation was high and unemployment was low is the inflation rate became more of a indi political indicator as to voters' opinions on the economy. But back to the original premise, uh, while the economy is not perfect, while here in California we're facing significant budget deficits as a result of the downturn in the stock market, and while there are continuing concerns about whether the Federal Reserve can steer us to a so-called soft landing, and when inflation goes up to some degree but not too high, so that we do avoid a recession, say on balance, uh, there's more to be positive about than negative by a significant margin. 
So as you know, voting for Speaker of the House went on for several days. So our, our last question is, McCarthy was very vocal in condemning Trump soon after the January 6th insurrection. Trump has recently endorsed McCarthy for Speaker of the House. Has some agreement between the two been privately made? No, I doubt it. It's clear that the two of them have talked. And it's equally clear that McCarthy and his allies really did lean on Trump to reach out to the resistors within the Republican caucus last week. That said, while Trump did reach out to some of those rebels, those Republicans who had not supported McCarthy for speaker for most of the week, it doesn't appear that Trump's outreach had any real impact. Ultimately, when those rebels fell into line, it was for a lot of reasons, but Donald Trump's opinion was not one of them. So in the past, there have been times when McCarthy and Trump have been very, very close. There have been times when there have been tensions between them. And there's no question that McCarthy's place in the Republican Party hierarchy is a lot stronger when Trump is saying good things about him rather than bad. But at least as far as the speakers vote, I don't think Trump had much to do with it. And although he did weigh in at McCarthy's request, Ultimately, those votes came together for much different types of reasons. Very interesting as we start heading towards 2024 as well. Yes, we have no shortage of topics to cover about, not just on Capitol Hill, but you're exactly right, Rachel, with the presidential campaign already underway. My guess is we're going to be talking about that quite a bit over the next year and a half. Definitely. Well, thank you so much, Dan, again, for taking the time to talk with us today and really looking forward to next month for next month's program as well. Oh, it's great to see you, Katie. Great to have a chance to talk with all of you again. And I look forward to seeing all of you again in early February when we do our next webinar. Thanks so much. Thanks, Dan. Thank you.